Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to those who are in the parking lot. We appreciate the fact that we could come and gather. And it's so great to see you. I can't wait for the day that we can gather again in the family room here at Grace and just uh, fellowship together. And hopefully that will be sooner rather than later. We can just continue to monitor and, and use wisdom and God will lead us and direct us. Those of you who are watching through Facebook Live, we welcome you. Thanks, Chris, for helping us with all of that. But um, how many know that God is moving by his spirit today? Amen. And uh, we're going to, to, uh, to think about that and sing that in just a moment. But uh, we've gathered here today and I'm so grateful. You know, one of the things I've thought about with all the adjustments that we're having to make here in the United States and Bradley County and Cleveland, Tennessee, I think about our brothers and sisters around the world who have to meet underground because of threat against their life because of the cause of Christ. The spirit of Antichrist is working in our world and uh, we've been in, in contact with some uh, missionaries and, and brothers and sisters in other parts of the world like Pakistan, we're gonna pray for them in just a moment, and we, uh, this church was able to help provide a sound system for the newest church of God over in Pakistan. But, uh, but, but in some of those areas, uh, uh, the Christians and uh, even even others who are not identified as, as uh, Islam or Muslim uh, are being persecuted, and uh, supplies and food being withheld. But God is moving by His Spirit. We want to continue to pray for those and uh, do what we can uh, through our prayer, through gathering together, using wisdom. But right now, it's always great. I appreciate Gregory Tao so much. He's been ministering online and working behind the scenes here, and uh, it's just so very unique. Today, we're going to invite uh, Chris and Jeremy to join with him. You have the words. Uh, there in your car and a couple of wonderful songs uh, of worship and praise and thanksgiving to God so right now let's just go before his presence with singing shall we hallelujah
see you today. I'm reminded as we're worshiping here outdoors of Psalm number 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims his handiwork. Praise the Lord. I'm reminded of with all these trees round about us of Psalm number one that tells us that the righteous person is like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaf does not wither and bears fruit in his season so I thank God that you're here today as a tree planted I, I'm also reminded of the fact that in the Old Testament you may not have considered this but in the Old Testament they always worshiped outdoors God was the only one inside the tabernacle. The people weren't in the tabernacle. God was in the tabernacle. The people were outside all around the tabernacle. And so uh, the Israelites always worshiped outdoors. So uh, we are following a great tradition. We've decided to, to uh, build buildings where we can be comfortable. Uh, and that's okay. I like I like to be comfortable. Thank God for the heat and air conditioning. But let me tell you, God is here. He is with us. And whether we're inside or outside, God is present. And that's what counts. 
thank you so much for being here today. Would you join with me in prayer as we seek the Lord for uh, special needs? We want to pray for our government and all of our leaders that they would make good decisions regarding uh, our behavior during this pandemic. We want to pray for Grace Logan's mother, Shirley, who's in ICU in Illinois and having a hard time breathing. We want to continue to pray for Leroy Mendel, who needs a healing touch from God, and he needs approval for a T-cell transplant. So let's pray for Brother Mendel. We want to lift up Gene Mintz, who had a car accident this week and is recovering. And so we, we're thankful that she's able to be here, actually, but we want to lift her up in prayer. We want to pray for the Church of God in Pakistan. Uh, our dear friends there uh, who are serving the Lord under, uh, under difficult circumstances and persecution, but they are, they're continuing to see souls saved. God is moving. God is moving in Pakistan. We want to pray for the Church of God and the, the, the people of Ireland. Our overseer there, Nick Park, has requested special prayer for the churches in Ireland. So let us lift up these needs. And let me tell you that when we pray, we are not just speaking out into the air. We are addressing the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the God of all the, the God that made these trees, the God that put the sky in place. Isaiah said he rolled out the sky uh, like a curtain and we, we and, he, and he placed the stars in their locations. Praise God. This is the God we're serving today. And he said, the Lord said to Jeremiah, did not I make the moon and the stars by my great power and outstretched arm? Behold, there is nothing too hard for me. There is nothing too hard for me. Do you believe that today? I believe, hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for God. So let us pray together. Father in heaven, we come to you today. We thank you for this congregation. We thank you for those who are able to be here and those who are watching at home. We pray for all those people, Lord, who are, are not a member of our congregation, but are, but are watching on Facebook or YouTube. And I pray you would bless them, Lord. God, I know Pastor Kevin has a message today that will bless our hearts, that will challenge us, that will draw us closer to you. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to pray. What a privilege. Lord, we ask you to touch our government officials, all of our leaders, church leaders and government leaders, that as they make decisions regarding uh, the, uh, the um, behavior, our, our, our conduct and the opening of businesses and so on, that you would give them wisdom. Give them wisdom, Lord, to do what is best for our people. Lord, we pray for, for Shirley in the hospital today. God, we know you can heal her body. You are the creator, and we know you can heal. And we ask you, Lord, to heal Shirley today. Father, we pray for Leroy Mendel for his complete and total healing. We pray that he'd be approved for this T-cell transplant. And we ask you, Lord, to work a miracle. Work a miracle in his body, O oh God, and heal him. Lord, we, we thank you that Jean is able to be here after this car accident, but we pray for her recovery. We pray you touch her and strengthen her today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for our churches in Pakistan and Ireland. Lord, they face challenges uh, in different ways. In Pakistan, the country is ruled by Islam. And, uh, you, oh Lord, we, we know that the church is, is, is considered second-class citizens. They are persecuted. So we pray you would touch them. In Ireland, Lord, there are so many nominal Christians who have the name of Christian, but they aren't really Christians. And so we pray for salvation. We pray for evangelism. We pray for our churches in Pakistan and Ireland that under each of their particular different challenges that you would give them the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit 
to win souls. And so that in all that we're doing today in our service, around the world in our churches, that we might give you glory for you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all the glory. Praise God. We thank you, Lord, now that you have heard our prayer and we believe you are working in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good morning. Uh, it's a little hard to speak to cars instead of smiling faces for me and uh, you folks at home, but uh, I am delighted to be here today. I am excited and uh, it's been hard for me to stay in. I, I need to get out and be doing something. And it's hard to stay in all day. Uh, but uh, I was thinking about what I missed this week. And uh, I had a granddaughter that came home that I hadn't seen in three months. And I couldn't hug her if I was going to be obedient. And that was hard. And then I had a granddaughter that turned 15 Wednesday. And I couldn't hug her. And uh, boy, I miss the hugs. Not only my grandchildren, but I miss hugging here at church. I'm a hugger and I just love uh, greeting people and hugging them and letting them know I love them. And I miss that. And I can't wait to get back to our regular services. And I can't wait to get back to hugging you folks that I love. Uh, we're thankful for all that are here and uh, we want to pray for our offering and we'll be taking that as we leave but uh, let's uh, say a prayer for that thank you father we love you today because you are worthy and lord you're in charge of everything and you're in charge of the coronavirus lord help us to just Strengthen our faith, Lord. Our Bible tells us where one of your saints said, strengthen my faith. And Lord, we ask you to strengthen our faith during this time, Lord. Uh, we ask you to give us faith, the Lord, to tithe and go above the tithe during this thing. Uh, most of us, a lot of us have had our income possibly stopped or cut. But Father, help us to have faith. Help us to be obedient, Lord. Help us to give with a joyful heart and the confirmation to know that you've got us in the palm of your hand, that you love us, you're going to care for us, and you're not going to forsake us or let us go hungry, Father. We thank you for that part. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tom. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Thank you, Praise Team. I want to invite your attention to Matthew, the 16th chapter. In just a moment, we're going to read that together. But uh, we've been living in a time of storms and wars and in the headlines of newspapers, TV reports, and we've seen pictures on social media of, of uh, especially the diseases, uh, uh, specifically coronavirus or COVID-19. Right here in Tennessee, there have been earthquakes recently. So, uh, uh, Easter Sunday night, tornadoes, three right here in Bradley County, and, and uh, all kinds of losses. We've seen pictures. Uh, uh, there's been loss of life, loss of animals, loss of jobs and incomes, loss of buildings, loss of be uh, uh, vehicles and, and, and trucks and boats and stuff. Thunderstorms, snowstorms hurricanes, conditions for tornadoes, all of these kinds of things can be detected and predicted by meteorologists, even though sometimes they get it wrong, but most of the time they're pretty close, and uh, we even today can, can pull up a radar and see real live uh, uh, goings on in our areas and around the, around the world. Um, but there have been some storms that could not have been predicted. No one could have predicted COVID-19, other diseases that the Center for Disease Control are dealing with. 
No one could predict the financial storms, especially when thing, things seem to be so strong. And just as we were so appreciative and, 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 and glad that that uh, Jean is here with us, but an unexpected car accident in Chattanooga on her way to a doctor's office this past week. Unexpected thing. But what can we detect or discern from all the unrest in our world in recent days? Certainly the Bible tells us about signs. It tells us about signs of the end times. We read about that in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. We know the prophet Joel and Daniel uh, uh, have, have things that they predict, that things that would happen in the last times. And, and while we do see signs of the end times all around us, in fact, ever since Jesus' ascension, there have been signs of the end times. But perhaps today, more than ever before in history, there are more signs all at the same time that, 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 that point that we are indeed in the last days. So Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to walk soberly. Help us to be about your business. But there's a story in Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus criticized some of the leaders of his day for focusing on natural signs rather than spiritual signs. They were focused on the weather and not discerning the signs of the times. So in Matthew 16, 1 through 4, we read, Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him. That's what their motive. You, you, we came today to worship. We made adjustments in our schedule so that we could worship. But they come and, and, and you know, if, if I could see Jesus face to face, I wonder what that conversation would be. I wonder what I would want to ask him. But they come testing him. And they asked if he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered them and said to them, When it's evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Jesus called them hypocrites. You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation after a sign and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah and he left them and departed <laughs> if if you need grace and mercy and, and and you are just humble before the Lord and you need a touch man Jesus is suffering he's kind he's gentle but if you come trying to build your kingdom instead of the kingdom of God if you come testing Jesus, he'll pick a fight right back with you, right? But Jesus wasn't focusing here on the signs of the end times, but on the fact that the Pharisees and Sadducees were asking for a sign that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. Sadly, what they really wanted to do was to discredit him before the people. They were testing him. You know what's ironic here is that the Pharisees and Sadducees were diametrically opposed to each other in their beliefs and behaviors. We know that the Sadducees, they were in cahoots with the Roman government, and that's why they were put in positions of leadership and, and positions where they would gain wealth. And because of that is why Jesus is teaching of, uh, about personal sacrifice and helping the, the poor and the underprivileged was a threat to them. The other thing is that the Sadducees, they didn't even believe in supernatural signs. They didn't believe that all scripture was inspired by God. And so I think it's ironic that they're even standing here together. They sought more signs. You know, there's a, there's a, a big difference between natural signs and spiritual signs. There's a difference between our natural senses our, our smell, our sight, our hearing, our, our, our feeling, but, uh, uh, and, and our spiritual senses. Natural signs like predicting the weather. Today, we can predict the weather is cloudy. It's cool. There's scattered light. That's easy. But, but, uh, uh, but, but the natural man, however, is dead when it comes to discerning spiritual signs. The sign of Jonah that Jesus was referring to, if you remember 
in Jonah. Dr. Martin wrote a whole uh, a whole curriculum about the book of Jonah, and um, and it's excellent stuff. But but beside here, we we remember Jonah was in the in the belly of the whale for three days, and then he was uh, uh, spit back up upon the uh, upon the shore. And and this was a a, a typology, a, a pointing to. Jesus being raised from the dead. You know, the people in Jesus' day, they did have signs. They lived in a time that foretold the coming of Messiah. We today live in a time uh, of the, uh, of the uh, 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 foretelling or we're looking for the, the return of the Lord. But in that day, they were waiting for the coming of Messiah. But they had signs. The virgin birth of Jesus, who was indeed the Messiah. The teachings, the miracles that Jesus did were oftentimes fulfillment of Old Testament uh, prophecies. There were many who did believe the signs of their times. A genuinely spiritual person could see the signs. In fact, uh, Simeon and Anna, when Jesus was brought to be dedicated by, uh, by Mary and Joseph, Simeon took the child and he said, now I can depart this world in peace. Because he saw and recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. The shepherds recognized the signs. The wise men from the east re uh, recognized those signs. Those whose lives were dramatically changed by Jesus. And even a centurion at the crucifixion of cross. When Jesus' body still on the cross. He looked up and he said, surely this was the son of God. Pharisees and Sadducees had the kingdom of God standing right in front of them in the person of Jesus Christ, but they refused to believe. The question is, was it that they could not or was it because they would not? I wonder in our world today, is it because people cannot or because that they will not? But Jesus met them head on. Because he knew they were only interested in tempting Christ and not be taught by Christ. But today we must also be careful that we don't just focus on the weather and the natural signs and go about an unchanged life. Like in the first century where they were anticipating the coming of promised Messiah. Again, we are anticipating the return of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. We must discern the spiritual signs of the time. God is concerned. Not for more signs from heaven. Dr. Martin just pointed out. God who created this world. Look at the stars. Look at the moon. Look at the earth. Look at the, at the rivers and the streams. Look at, the, at the, uh, uh, the, the rainbow in the sky. Look at the trees. Look at the birds. Look at God's creation that declares the glory of God. He's given us something. We don't need another sign from heaven, do we? God's great concern is meeting people in their, in their need, in their lives, within their hearts, where they really need Him. We need to be concerned about COVID-19. We want to pray for protection. We want to pray for wisdom. We want to pray for an for a antibiotic. We want to pray for a vaccine. We want to pray for all of that. But I'm going to tell you, while we're praying for protection from COVID-19, isn't the heart of God moved? He says, but there's people who are dying every day, and I don't want them to go to hell. We understand that 2 Peter 3, 9 reads that God is not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. Even last night, my phone went off. It was the 911 center dispatch calling me to a scene where someone was found dead. There are people who are leaving this world. I can tell you this in Bradley County. There are more people who have died this week over overdoses of drug abuse and those kinds of addictions than have been claimed by Corona. And I'm not making light of Corona or any other disease or any of the other brokenness in our fallen world. We need God's help. We're desperately calling upon the name of the Lord. But we must also keep everything in perspective and realize that here's a time if there are the signs of the end times and we believe that. Don't you believe that? Then there are people who are who God loves and Jesus died for who desperately need to know God's love and they need to come to repent of their sin and 
and, and accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. Jesus, uh, Jesus said it this way, that God was interested in giving us abundant life and eternal life. God does want to meet people. I am praying for my brother. I'm praying for others. He needs a miracle touch from God. And we're believing that the doctors will have wisdom and that the hand of God will be upon him and that he can come through this situation. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. He is good. Thank you, Greg, for reminding us. He's a good, good father. He's loving. He's merciful. There are the signs of the times of the last days, but today, in addition to the signs that, that were given to the Jews, in addition to the signs of the end times, we today actually have the signs also of the completed work of Jesus Christ. All the prophecies that have been fulfilled. So what message is God sending to our world today? We don't have time to really discuss all that God may be saying. I'm sure that we don't know all that God is saying. But this week in preparation and prayer, there are some things that came to my mind. And I want to just offer three observations. They're not new, but sobering reminders to us all. First of all, there's been this discussion about, discussion about what's essential. Is this business essential? Is this service essential? Well, this is essential or that's not essential. But here's what I know. As, we, as we've been debating that, the nature of possessions is temporary. When the tornadoes ripped through our community a couple of weeks ago, hey, we've seen reports on TV. We've seen the pictures in the papers and on the Internet. There are homes. There are businesses. There are cars. There are boats. There's all kinds of stuff twisted up like a toothpick and just scattered in a big, heap, ruined mess. Haven't you noticed that no one is saying, hey, I can't find my car or my big screen TV? Uh, no, if they are mourning, it's for the loss of people or loved ones and not much focus upon the things and stuff. Now, 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 we need our places of, of, of housing and, and I'm so grateful for those who have been working and helping and and, and, and bringing restoration and, and bringing comfort to those who have been caught in those things. But we realize, and the church must realize, that people matter more than possessions, right? Jesus said in Luke 12, verse 15, and he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for uh, one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them and saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I'll do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Matthew 16. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels and then he will reward each one according to his work. Unfortunately, it seems that it takes storm, storms or some disasters or some disease to pry our hands off of stuff and get our attention off of stuff because what was precious to us now means very little. What we once ignored is now very precious. First Timothy, the Apostle Paul in chapter 6, verse 17, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. There you go. See, God's not against his people enjoying things or having things. He's against things having people. And we've seen recently how those things that we think are so important, really, it helps us to realize what's essential and what's not. And he goes on to say, let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation 
for the time to come that they may hold on eternal life. The problem when we begin to compare about what does he mean rich? Who's rich? Who's not rich? Look, when I was traveling on the road with the Spurlows and the singing group years ago, I stood at the Rio Grande River. I looked across at the Rio Grande River and I saw a tin, had cardboard side and, and, and a tin roof, dirt floor. Now, I also live in an area of town uh, in and right down the block were what was referred to as the projects, government housing, and, and we would say it would be for underprivileged uh, folks, right? Well, when you look at the other side of the Rio Grande, those people living in, on, the, on that Mexico side that I saw with dirt floors and a tin roof would look at the project and say, man, those people have it really, really good. Those are rich people. For, for, for us, we might look in, in, in certain areas and and, 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 and other certain areas say, well, well, those are rich. Well, those are poor. So we have to be careful that we don't get into this thing about, uh, uh, about material possessions and how much is in a bank account. But, but remember being rich toward God and those who are not rich toward God. And, it got, and again, it's, it's a matter of stewardship. But my point is we've learned through these storms and what the tornadoes have claimed in just a few seconds. That stuff isn't really the most important thing, but life. We've also seen the nature of people. We've seen the best, and we've seen some of the worst. We've seen people rescuing and helping their neighbors, civil servants taking great risks to help total strangers, heroes who never seek applause or reward from anyone. That's humanity at its best, perhaps. On the other hand, We've seen police have to guard areas. Why? Because people break in and they want to we, they want to loot and take advantage of what they can steal from other people. We've seen folks recently uh, as close as Chattanooga. There may be other areas of uh, taking um, uh, advantage of a situation. They were they were hoarding uh, hand sanitizers and toilet papers and masks, even even sometimes food and then charging large amounts of money for them. And uh, they've been held accountable, some of those folks. And I'm not trying to judge, I'm just stating the obvious that we've seen the best and the worst of people. Which causes us to ask a question, what's the bigger problem? Is it mother nature or human nature? <laughs> There's not much we can do about hu uh, mother nature except pray, and I, and I guess human nature too. Because Isaiah 53 and six says, all we like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. Romans 3 and 23 reminds us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know what sin celebrates? The middle letter of its own word, S-I-N, I. We don't have to travel to tornado affected areas or corona infected areas to see it. Because of sin of people, uh, they're, they're motivated by what's in it for me or what feels good, do it. When the storms of life blow in, the true nature of humanity is revealed and our deepest need is unveiled. We have a deeper need than just hand sanitizers and other things. What we need is not really a new system, but a new nature. How many know that a new nature can only come from a relationship with Jesus Christ who changes us from the inside out? Hallelujah. Anybody been changed in the parking lot today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have to, have to add to Psalm 150. Praise Him. With, well, the horns are in there. <laughs> I guess car horns. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to run that by Dr. Martin, see if we get his approval on that. Not only have we seen the nature of possessions as temporary, and we've seen the nature of people, but then we've also seen the nature of God's grace. It's on your bulletin each week when you come into the family room, but underneath that carpet in a, in, a, in a permanent marker is written this scripture, Romans 5.20, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Aren't you glad? Where sin abounded, grace of God abounded much more and does abound much more. 
after tornadoes hit Texas and Oklahoma and Mississippi and Louisiana, and South Georgia and Tennessee, before any rebuilding can take place, the mess has to be cleaned up. You've seen pictures of it. I've seen pictures of it. Pictures of it. But isn't that what God did for us? We couldn't clean ourselves up from sin. It was in a mess. Our lives were in a mess. But God in His grace sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to come and to wash us with His own blood and that He shed on the cross and He keeps us by His Holy Spirit. Titus tells us about it this way in Titus 3. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy we have, He has saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's what our world needs today. We need hope. We need to know that there's a better day coming, that we're going to get through this storm. Um, I appreciate, uh, I, I guess I was talking with Brother Mike Justice recently, and he was talking about the, 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 the seasons, and, and we're in springtime, and, and we see new life budding all around us, and then summer, and then there's the fall, there's the, the death, things die, and then it's cold and, and dreary through the winter, but we have hope because we know that spring is coming. We, we know that God is working, amen. He is moving by His Spirit. What people can only dream of doing with acres of mess and, and ruin, God has done over and over and over again spiritually to whosoever will. I was thinking about Noah and his family. They went through a terrible storm, a flood. Noah may not have been able to find his neighborhood nor find his house that he lived in, but what he found was what we all need to find. And Genesis 6, 8 tells us, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Aren't you glad for the grace of God? Hallelujah. And we can find grace today in the time of this storm of coronavirus, of, of cancer, of other things that, that touch our life, of tornadoes and hurricanes and all the signs of the end times. God is still pouring out his spirit. Thank God for his grace. We've seen the signs of the times. We've been eyewitnesses of the fact that you can have everything and no grace. You have nothing. But you can have nothing but have the grace of God and it seems that you have everything. Perhaps the saddest stories are stories of people who could have been rescued and sometimes refused to be. You know, last season there were hurricanes. When a hurricane, you know, when a tornado comes, you... You get a watch and then you get a warning and in just a few minutes, I mean, the conditions might be right and just spring up. You're not, not much warning for that, but, but when a, or, or, or even an earthquake, but, but when a hurricane's coming, sometimes we have a week's notice. Hey, it's coming your way. You need to evacuate. You need to take cover. But some people just hold out. They don't heed the, the, the warning. They refuse to take shelter when conditions are right or tornadoes or, or they, uh, or they hold out during hurricanes, even with several days of warning, warning and, and mandatory evacuate, evacuation. Many pay a deadly price. During the COVID-19 threat, many have refused to heed safety precautions and they leave themselves vulnerable. How many other lifestyle hazards are there that people disregard? I just told you about drug overdoses and I and look, I'm, I, I pray for people who, who have addictions and they suffer with brokenness. You understand brokenness. We were all broken. We were all lost in sin. In many ways, all of us remain broken and we need the grace of God. And God does work and he does heal and he does deliver. He does set free and he helps us. How many DUI related deaths are there? Diseases from sexual promiscuity. And the, and the use of dirty needles while shooting up, not the least of which is the fact that people are dying every day. How many realize that there is a heaven to gain? Praise God, but there's also a hell to shun. And so when it comes to spiritual signs, there are still too many holdouts. But I wonder how many people, especially during hurricanes, changed their minds about holding out, but there were no rescuers. They waited too late. I wonder how many people today are going through a storm right now, 
people in our city who have not been physically touched by coronavirus or the tornadoes, but by a, another storm of life that is raging on inside. Greg, I'm going to ask you to come if you would, please. I'm satisfied that building, buildings will be rebuilt. Buildings will be restored. Cars may be repaired. But we're reminded in the Psalms that only God, our great shepherd, can restore us all. Oh God, I believe that you've raised us up today. You woke us up today. You've raised this church up today and the body of Christ around the world, Lord, to be a rescuer for people who may not even realize that God's grace is reaching out to them today. Lord, they're holding out, but we pray for them. You may be in this very parking lot and the storm is tossing you to and fro. But I want you to know that he wants to be your peace speaker today. He wants to say, peace, be still. The psalmist in Psalm 46, verse 1 through 3 says this, God is our refuge and strength. Thank God for safe buildings. I thank God for, for first responders and others who try to protect us, nurses and doctors. But God today wants to be our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, the psalmist says, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, God may use storms and pestilences to get people's attention, but it's only so that they will call upon Him, so that He can respond to them with grace and save them and give them hope and eternal life with Him. Isaiah 33 and 6 reads this, God will be the sure foundation for your times a rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. I know there's a lot of crazy things going on in our world today, but I also know this, and this is not crazy, that God is moving by His Spirit 24-7. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. Carol Simbola, rector of the of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir wrote a song and it simply says that God is moving by His Spirit moving in all the earth signs and wonders when God moves move O Lord in me it was early this morning the Lord dropped this song into my spirit I just couldn't get away from it so you don't have the words but, but there's not many and they're pretty simple and as we conclude today's service, and we're going to pray in just a moment, I want this song to be a part of our prayer and a reminder that God is indeed moving. Hallelujah. God is moving by His Spirit.
Father, I thank you that you are moving by your Spirit today. Move, oh Lord, you're moving in this world that you created. Lord, you're moving over all the earth. Lord, you're moving upon the lives of people groups around this world. Lord, I thank you, Lord, and we invite you, Lord, to, to move in us today. Lord, let there be signs and wonders that point people to the grace and the heart of God. Lord, that point people to a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, continue to move, extending the provenient grace of God in hearts and lives. Lord, I thank you for moving in this world. I thank you for moving in our country. Lord, move upon our leaders and directors, Lord. Give them wisdom, Lord. Move upon our community, Lord, our county and our city. Move upon Tennessee and our government. Lord, I pray that you move upon us right here at Grace Community Church of God. Lord, move in our midst today. Lord, move in us. Lord, move in every vehicle, Lord, that's here in this parking lot. Move in the living rooms and in the in the in the um, uh, rest rooms and uh, not the rest room, but the but the rest homes and and the nursing homes and the hospital rooms. And Lord, wherever people might be, God, I pray that you would move. Lord, I just sense that you're moving right now, and Lord, every vehicle right here in this parking. Lord, I pray, would you just extend your hand and pray for that vehicle, the people in the vehicle next to you, Lord God, that you would move. Lord, you know what storms people are dealing with. Lord, we all know about coronavirus. We all know about cancer. We all know about death. We all know about the tornadoes and, and, and other storms that have happened. But Lord, there are people that might be in the middle of a storm right now. Lord, I pray that you would move mightily so lovingly, so mercifully, so graciously. Lord, I thank you for miracles today. I thank you for deliverance today. I thank you for healing today. I thank you for your provision today. I thank you for your presence. God, we, we invite your divine providence over our community, over our country, over our world. Yes, God, we confess we need you. Move, O oh Lord, in me. There are signs and wonders we thank you for. Thank you, Lord, for doing your work. I pray a blessing upon each and every one, Lord, as we conclude our service today. Lord, I thank you that we leave this parking lot, but we don't leave the presence of Almighty God. Thank you for being with us. Anoint us, Lord. Help us to be witnesses in these last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Move, oh Lord, in me. Would you let that be your prayer? Signs and wonders one last time. There are signs and wonders when God moves. love you. God loves you. I want to run over there and be one, one of those carts on your way out because I just want to get to see everybody. God bless you. We love you. Blessings on you. Thank you. Well, thank you.